bring a stone, this dip is on the brain tin. People get to laugh and that's jokes, even I'm a comedian. I'ma keep continuing to fight till it's legalized. I'm completely at ease every time that I am getting high. So tell me why you wanna fuck with me? Come on, dog, let us know to go free. Now you need a burn a bag, call me where's your sack at? Break out your ball, dog, where are you at? at? Yeah, we smoke kush and we smoke green crap. Roll the illest blunts in the bus in the backpack. Oh, we smoke out. I got the killer chronic in a dirty, dirty mouth. 24 7 stay high every day. K and K stay blaze. I'm up on the loose control. I'm up myself another boat. No, I'm not out here with my mind. Let's be up enough, my soul. I'm up with another magic bowl. Everything is better when you're high. Yeah, 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 Is invested in the words, obsessed with a text. Yeah, I love literature, but it burns. Rap's getting on my nerves. Everything nowadays watered down for the herbs. The real shit seems standard to dirt. Swept under the rug, left under the curb. Cause not yet, just resting in the burbs. Take a deep breath before getting back to work. But now it's back on, taking out the wax sauce. All for the love of the Ash Roth. Chilling in the backyard, kicking it with Hacksaw. He's an alcoholic with a bad cough. It doesn't matter, he's an asshole. But plenty of us who make bad calls. But only one can change the outcome. So change it now before change is outdone. Mind over matter, but with money on my mind, I can't think of nothing. Such a funny design. Yeah, one of a kind. Taking one at a time. Let them in upon the secret that we're free as a fly. Free as a freestyle.
Russ Belleville Show is intended for responsible adults only. We advocate to the repeal of marijuana prohibition for adults. We discuss the science, culture, and controversy about America's marijuana laws. We do not advocate any illegal activity and encourage all listeners to learn their state and federal marijuana laws. Opinions and claims made by guests and advertisers on the Russ Belleville Show are their own, and the Russ Belleville Show cannot be held legally responsible for their validity or reliability. Viewer discretion is advised. You take a seed, you plant it, you grow it, you dry it, you roll it, you smoke it. You take a seed, you plant it, you grow it, you dry it, you roll it, you smoke it, and it goes down smooth. Hey! Spanning the continent to bring you the truth about cannabis and marijuana law reform. I smoke pot and I like it a lot. Yeah! From the promise of legalization. To the agony of prohibition. One major responsibility is to encourage people to use less drugs. The Russ Belleville Show, the voice of the marijuana nation. Brought to you by the National Cannabis Coalition. Yeah, I hear you. You had a question for me. Now, here's your host, Radical Russ. Oh, yeah. Welcome back, everybody. It is Monday. We love the herb. Monday, June 11th. June. Yes. June 11th, 2012. (laughs) I'm having so much fun here. I've forgotten where the hell I am and what the hell I'm doing. Welcome to the show. I'm Russ Belville, host of the Russ Belville Show here on the new National Cannabis Radio. Make sure you set your browser bookmarks to ncr420.com or if you feel like typing it out, nationalcannabisradio.com. We're starting an hour late today because we had all sorts of technical difficulties. This is our beta week, so I want to thank all of the listeners and viewers who are sticking with us. Uh, Just beta testing, working out the new stuff. We've moved over to live stream. It's got this great uh, system for uh, streaming at multiple bit rates, high def, high quality, medium quality, and even mobile. Uh, we're going to be tweaking all these kind of things throughout the week. So thanks for sticking with us and, and being patient. Our official grand premiere launch is next Monday, and uh, we'll have all sorts of stuff to show you then. But uh, for today, uh, we're still working out some of the kinks. As you can see at the beginning, the uh, video processor wasn't working properly. Uh, Big Daddy Fink went and did an update for the intros and I can't show them to you because, well, that decided not to work. So we will just get by. We'll do what we can. And we'll start by introducing our senior news editor. I'm sorry, our news director hanging out there in the virtual <laughs> studio in Grass Story. It's we'll Cannabis Carrie. Hello. Oh, yes, sorry, that extra hour I got some tea drink. In oh, it's Cannabis <laughs> Carrie. We're getting some echo now. Hold on, Carrie. Are you getting echo through your side there? No, not at all. Okay, I got to find out where the echo is coming on my side. Sorry about that, folks. Just one second. Like I said, we are beta testing and making sure everything is working. And I've got so many things to click and touch and make sure that they work. So there we go. That should kill the echo on that side. Let's try it again. Carrie, are you there? I'm here, Russ. Way Just there. one of me, I think. <laughs> so many buttons to push. So what do we have in the headlines today, Carrie? Well, today we're going to cover two court cases that are being heard and argued today. One, a Supreme Court case out of Georgia that talks about emerging technology and how police can use it against you. We're also going to catch up with that uh, case out of California where a mother is in danger of uh, child abuse charges for breastfeeding her baby while smoking medical marijuana. Also, Tommy Chong in the news this weekend revealed some health issues. We're going to talk about that. And if we have time to get to it, a prominent Republican has come out uh, in favor of uh, legalizing and has uh, said she's openly smoking. We're going to tell you all about her as well. Ooh, a surprise Republican toker? I guess so. (laughs) All right. Well, that sounds good to me. Also on the show today, it is Roots Monday, so I'm going to bring you some blues from Antones. If you know the club Antones in Austin, Texas, the home of uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan cut his teeth there, a whole bunch of great blues performers coming out of Austin, Texas. We got another great one for you today. Uh, Ruthie, uh, Ruthie Wilson, I think is her name. Make sure you get the name. Ruthie Foster. There there we go. Ruthie Foster with her song song entitled Stone Love will come up at the 20 after break. Then at half past, we're going to talk with Dale Sky Jones, the uh, uh, the chancellor of Oaksterdam University. She's got some news for us. And then at the end of the show, time for a radical rant. I'm going to tell you who you should vote for for president if you really want to see marijuana legalized. So stick around for that. Also, let's introduce the crew here in the studio. We've got hanging out on camera three. Wiz Coleco is in the house. Uh, 
How you doing, Quico? Quite well. Glad to be here. Luckily, this is a radio show, so yeah, the no video doubt. things, we'll get those worked out. Yeah. And you just got back from Bay Area, I understand? I did. I was warming it up for us going down to the High Times Cup uh, next weekend, so it was very beautiful weather. All Looking right. We've also, we've also got Brian the Red hanging out over there on camera for How you doing, Brian? I'm here. Russ. How you doing? Doing good. Just working through the technical difficulties. Yeah. All right, folks, stay Thank tuned. You. We will be back with more here on the Russ Bell Show. Uh, we've got the news coming up next. Stick around and make sure you support the people that are supporting this show. Turn off your ad blockers and support our advertisers. Advertisers. Be right back after this. Show. Text the word Russ to 420-420 and connect with the National Cannabis Coalition. You can also send 10 bucks to the Russ Belleville Show right from your smartphone. That's Russ to 420-420. You're listening to Radical Russ oh, on the Russ Belleville Show. Coleco's wallet and cell phone are missing again. And Taco Bell's already been searched. We got to look somewhere else. Marijuana's not going to re legalize itself. You've got to do your part. Join the National Cannabis Coalition today at nationalcannabiscoalition.com. Medical marijuana, industrial hemp, ganja sacrament, consumer cannabis. The topic of marijuana is heating up the news, and the Russ Belleville Show catches you up with today's latest headlines. Now, here's our senior news editor, Cannabis Carey, with the Daily Cannabis Chronicle. News to report on the health of comedian and actor and activist Tommy Chong. Tommy has revealed this weekend on CNN that he is seeking treatment for prostate cancer. He said that he was diagnosed with the disease about a month ago, and the doctors have told him it is a slow-stage cancer that he's had for quite some time. The 74-year-old icon said that he had the initial symptoms of prostate cancer when he was in jail eight years ago for selling bongs. He said that during that period, he had been cannabis-free for a period of three years, something he says tells him that his cancer had nothing to do with his pot use. He did say he believes that cannabis can cure some kinds of cancers and that he's begun a treatment of ingesting hemp oil at night. He said the ordeal has made uh, smoking a joint without being arrested even more important than before. We wish him a speedy recovery. Yeah, uh, bad news we heard this weekend about Tommy Chong and, and you know, he says he's using the, the Rick Simpson's oil, the hemp oil to try to help treat that. Tommy, I do want to encourage you to keep up with that treatment. We've seen a lot of people, you know, anecdotally get a lot of good results out of that. You know, cash hide comes to mind. But don't turn your back on the proven treatments for cancer that that we know do work. That That's my only problem with the people that are of the, you know, uh, cannabis oil cures cancer uh, cult out there is that it may very well be helpful. And, and, and there's still a whole lot we have yet to unlock about the, the medical benefit of cannabinoids. And I do believe they will provide us the tools we need to cure cancer someday. But we're not there yet. We don't all the all the evidence isn't in, and we still haven't you know pulled this gotten to this to the point where it's double blind, placebo controlled, peer reviewed science, right? So yes, use the cannabis oil. It can definitely help. It's not going to hurt. But don't give up on any other treatments that that we do know will work that have been proven to help reduce uh, a, a, and eliminate cancer in people's lives. Um, the other thing I, I thought of when I heard this story is how the uh, prohibitionists must be lining up to go, aha, see, you guys said cannabis cures cancer, and look, Tommy Chong got cancer. But Tommy made a point in his uh, reporting on the, uh, in the story that I read about this to point out that he feels it was the the, the terrible food and the terrible uh, conditions that he had to go through it for nine months while he was locked up for selling art glass on the internet that helped contribute to his uh, decline in health. Uh, maybe it's just coincidence that he went to the went to jail 
at the same time that the cancer kicked in, but I don't think so. I think that his use of cannabis, had it been left alone, could have definitely helped to stave off any of these cancers that uh, might have uh, uh, that might have come along. And uh, we just need to wish Tommy, you know, all of our best well wishes and get well soon, my man. And a mother in a small town in Northern California, the county of Butte, is facing a preliminary hearing today to determine whether she should stand trial for breastfeeding her children while using marijuana. 30-year-old Daisy Bram, whose police ordeal was captured on audio tape with her crying hysterically as child welfare workers tried to remove her 14-month-old and a newborn infant from her while police were searching their home for marijuana. Both Bram and her husband, Jamie Walsh, were charged with felony marijuana possession and possession with intent to sell um, they had 38 plants uh, in a garden outside and an additional 56 plants inside their home. Activists have rallied around Bram and many in the nation were moved by that audio recording that went viral on the web. Now, there was a preliminary hearing on her case in November where a judge upheld the drug charges but threw out the counts of felony child abuse that she and her husband were both charged with. The Butte County District Attorney Mike Ramsey refiled those char- child endangerment charges against Daisy Bram when her toddler tested positive for marijuana through the use of a hair sample. Her defenders say Bram is essentially being prosecuted for breastfeeding while using medical marijuana. Advocates are saying her case dramatizes the heavy-handed policies uh, for medical marijuana use in Butte County. District Attorney Mike Ramsey makes no apology for his contention that many people in the county are exploiting the cover of medical marijuana to illegally deal the substance. Ramsey said his prosecution of Bram is consistent with with his office's mission to protect drug-endangered children. And in this case, he said it was from a home that was strewn with marijuana buds that were being harvested. He said their house was obviously a place that endangered the health of those children. And Ramsey contends that Brahm was not protecting the children from their commercial marijuana growing operation. Brahm's children were put into foster care after the raid on the house. And in her campaign to get them back, she posted online photos of herself breastfeeding her children, toddler Thor and baby Zeus. Daisy Brom did get her children back four months after they were taken away and after she had to give up her prescription for the drug Marinol. Brown maintains that she is being prosecuted for her use of using medical marijuana. Both parents contend that the plants were for personal use and never sold. Yeah, this case is just a travesty of justice that's going on here. It's more of this witch hunt against mothers who would choose to use cannabis rather than any number of pharmaceuticals they'd they'd freely give a, a mother who was breastfeeding and not even think twice about it. Uh, that a child would turn up for cannabinoid metabolites in its hair uh, is, is no indication that this child was in any danger whatsoever. Uh, the cannabinoids that are passed along in breast milk are not that unlike passing along the endogenous cannabinoids that that mothers pass in their breast milk already. We've seen studies that have shown uh, with mice and and lab animals here that if we we remove those endocannabinoid functions, that it causes problems with the infants suckling, with them uh, them feeding and surviving. It's it's a very part of of infant survival, this endocannabinoid system and the cannabinoids that people are using. This is just more discrimination against people who use cannabis. To, to, To say that she was you know, committing child abuse, child abuse for taking care of her children. I'd say the child abuse is when the cops come in with the automatic weapons and the chaos and the violence and rip infants off a mother's breast and put them into foster care when she's a perfectly decent parent, perfectly able of caring for her child. This is just one more way that this prohibition war touches us all. The people out there that don't use cannabis that think that this can't happen to you, this can happen to you. This can happen to someone you know, to someone you love, and because of the chances of false positives, which are not uh, insignificant, this could happen to you even if you don't use cannabis. It's important that we end this war on marijuana and this need to be testing the fluids and blood and hair and saliva of little kids and babies and 11-year-olds who want to play in the school orchestra. It's gone too far. When do we get our freedom back? When do we get our liberty back? When are they going to start treating us like adults. And we actually get this question from time to time about the use of thermal imaging to detect a grow room. Now, in a case involving emerging technology, a public defender in Athens, Georgia, will speak before the state Supreme Court today about the use of that technology to collect evidence about his case. In 2009, authorities used a thermal imaging device on James Brundridge's home where they suspected he was involved in criminal activity. The thermal imaging device showed a hot spot in Mr. Brundridge's home, and the authorities in that case took that as evidence uh, and taken it to a judge saying that they 
they needed a warrant because they thought he had hot lights uh, growing his marijuana in his home. The judge granted that warrant, and on May 29th of 2009, the Northeast Georgia Regional Drug Task Force raided Mr. Brundage's home and indeed found an indoor cannabis garden. The 28-year-old was charged with manufacturing possession with intent to distribute and possession of a controlled substance, charges that he pled not guilty on. His public defender took his case to the Superior Court to try and have that case dismissed dismissed, arguing the evidence in the case was illegally seized. Western Judicial Court Assistant Public Defender Benjamin Perlman told the judges that a mere hotspot wasn't enough evidence to gain a warrant. He told the justices that a search warrant commands an officer to enter onto someone's premise to search for a specific specific thing, something tangible that you can touch and that a jury can examine. A reading from a device that indicates a large amount of heat is not something that can be held, according to Perlman. Now, those arguments were exactly the same when he tried to suppress that evidence in Superior Court. When that failed, he brought them to the Georgia Court of Appeals, and now they're in front of the state Supreme Court, tr hoping that they will try to understand his reasoning behind suppressing the thermal technology device gathering evidence. Now, uh, for those of you that thought that this was already decided, as I did back in um, 2003, um, Georgia is a little bit different. They have a rule where they're basically arguing on tangible evidence. Uh, the Supreme Court will, has to understand that reasoning. The requirement for a warrant, according to Georgia law, is that they need tangible evidence, and it can't be issued for anything other than that. Perlman is arguing that heat or heat loss can't be brought into the court system. He says, according to Black's Law Dictionary, the most widely used law dictionary in the country, the legal definition of tangible means having or possessing physical form. Now, prosecutors are arguing that tangible includes definitions that are measurable and readily apprehensible by the mind. Therefore, they hope the warrant stands and that evidence can be used. And Mr. Brundage will be locked up for some time for his crimes. Hmm. OK, so this is uh, kind of confusing. Let me see if I got this right, Carrie. It's basically they're not the, the question before the court here isn't whether or not the cops could have used the thermal gun. It's whether or not a thermal gun is actually evidence, is actually tangible. Did, did, am I getting that right? That it's well, actually, the, 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 what they're looking for is tangible because they're not, with a thermal imaging device, they're not looking for pictures of marijuana. They're looking for heat escaping. Mm -hmm. So um, in it was 2001 case, Kylo versus United States, that right. the state Supreme Court said that a search with thermal imaging devices uh, searching within somebody's house and it requires a warrant. So uh, political watchers are hoping that the uh, state Supreme Court will uh, throw that evidence out and hopefully nationally we can recognize that thermal imaging is not a way to collect evidence. Right, right. So they need a warrant to be able to use the thermal imaging device, or this is, they used a thermal imaging device, and the results of that, they were trying to get a warrant with, but they can't get the warrant because the results right. of that weren't tangible. Right. Okay. The judge gave him okay. a warrant. They're saying you can't use solely that to get a warrant. Okay, okay. That makes that's, that makes a lot of sense to me, too, because, you know, we, we did a story a while back uh, from the U.K. where a woman, you know, the, the, the cops come down and they raid her house and, you know, scare the hell out of her because of a thermal imaging that they got off a, a helicopter or something, a, a building out back. She, you know, massive heat coming off of it. And then it turned out that it was something like a, 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 a chick... Um, what do they call it when the incubator? Yeah, they're incubating chicks or, or some sort of animals. And of course, they had the heat coming off from that. There's all sorts of legitimate reasons why your house may be emitting unnatural amounts of heat. Uh, you know, we could have uh, the lights that we got in this studio sometimes can can emit a lot of heat. Uh, the you know, the, the case of the, the incubators, like I was just saying there. I mean, again, this is it just amazes me to the lengths to which our government, our law enforcement will go to try to stop people from cultivating a house plant. We'll go to the the Mr. Gadget's uh, you know uh, Mr. Gadget's storeway there to make sure that we have thermal imaging and radars and GPS devices and long distance scanning and oh have you heard about that laser uh, speaker stuff where like they can point a laser at a pane of glass on your home and based off the vibrations on the pane of glass they can hear what you're saying yeah this is the kind of technology that they're employing to try to stop people from using pot and the reason they're able to do this is because the federal government gives grants called burn grants. B Y R N E grants uh, to the local and state police departments based on how many potheads they round up, based on how many drug convictions they're able to secure, based on how many marijuana arrests they can make. So there's all the incentive in the world and all the money in the world to pour into getting bigger and better technology to snoop into our private lives, to look through our walls, and to try to detect whether or not we're using marijuana instead of Budweiser or Marlboro or some something else that's a, a little more approved by society. Uh, uh, this is a 1984 scenario, if you're asking me about this. This is just crazy that we would live in a world now where where we're using 
all this technology, all of these means to go after pot growers. I mean, I'm not anti-technology, man. If you can come come up with some sort of uh, detection device that can detect child molesters, hey, let's work on that. Huh? How about a little gun we can point at people to see whether or not they're a child molester? How about we can detect whether or not someone's a, a murderer, right? Nobody is working on those kind of things, man. We always want to work on how can we detect if someone's growing pot in their basement or pot in their closet? What a waste of time and what a tragedy and, and, and a waste of human life, too. It's just disgusting. All right. So uh, that didn't fire off like I expected to. So let's just go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm having a Monday, guys. It's 420 here in Oregon, <laughs> and we have a mandatory safety meeting. With yeah, Monster something Tan, like that. <laughs> if you know what I mean. Please support these sponsors who support the Russ Belleville Show. I need some of this. Oh, have you when we come back, we'll have your Roots Monday Daily Toker me, tune, and then Dale Sky me. Jones from Oaksterdam University is on the line at the bottom of the hour. Stick around. It's the Russ Belleville Show on me. National Cannabis Radio. He said he swam to China. He would send you South Carolina. Then you know you Talking to that reefer man. I'm Sub Cool from Team Green Avenger. At TGAgenetics.com, we are working on the leading edge of medical strains. Our strains are rigorously tested for THC, CBD, THCV, and other critical cannabinoids. Know your grow. Check out our genetic diversity at TGAgenetics.com. The home of Jelly Bean, Jack the Ripper, Vortex, and other award-winning cannabis strains. The Russ Belleville Show brings you the best in daily toker tunes every weekday. Each day features a different genre, including Roots Monday, Electric Tuesday, Irie Wednesday. Summer ganja planter, call me the ganja farmer. Reuben Thursday. Do you wanna get high? And Rocket Friday. Then on weekends, we mix them all together in our weekend music party. Everyone knows music and marijuana go together, so let's wind up our 20 after break with the Russ Belleville Show's Daily Toker Tunes, the best in pod safe 420 music from around the web. Today is Roots Monday, featuring the blues, country, folk, and jazz music that birthed the modern sounds we enjoy today. You can get downloads and more information about all our Daily Toker Tunes by visiting music.radicalrust.com. Now, Sit back and enjoy your daily toker tunes. All right, folks, welcome back. And uh, for Roots Monday here, I'm going to take you into the world of blues. Uh, I played blues music for a long, long time. It's very, very dear to me. And uh, today we bring you some music uh, that was recorded live at Antones, which is the famous uh, blues club in Austin, Texas, uh, that was made famous by uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan, among other people. And uh, today's artist is Ruthie Foster, who comes to us with Ruthie Foster and the Family Band. And uh, she says uh, she's an extraordinary songwriter performer, and uh, she's She's come from a long trajectory here to make it uh, in the blues world. She's gone all the way to uh, Europe and Australia and uh, weaves country and jazz influences uh, into her music. So I think you'll really enjoy this. This song is entitled Stone Love. It's from Ruthie Foster, and you can get it at our uh, Daily Toker Tunes uh, repository at RadicalRust.com. Just go to music.radicalrust.com for your downloads. This is Ruthie Foster with Stone Love. Sometimes it gets so hard to find a place to start You wanna run, you wanna hide There's something deep inside this dry your eyes You see your worries, they'll be alright Stick around you, see your love is winning and fine You need a stone, love, love Oh, nothing's gonna move you, say nothing's gonna 
Sometimes it gets so hard to find. Sometimes it gets so hard to find your own peace of mind. You wanna hear? You wonder that? You may find your troubles just too hard to bear. You see, your worries they'll be alright. Look around you, see the love is winning. Find the stone, love, love. Oh, love is gonna pull you. Say no. Foster with Stone Love live at Antones. When we come back, Dale Sky Jones Have from you Oaks ever to Stick around. How to make the best tasting and most potent pop brownies possible? Do you consistently seek out recipes that will elevate your marijuana infused cuisine to the highest levels imaginable? Then it's time to pick up a copy of the official High Times Cannabis Cookbook, published by the world's most trusted name when it comes to getting stoned. Packed tight with more than 50 recipes for iry appetizers, munchy meals, high holidays, stoner sweets, and cannabis cocktails, along with expert advice that demystifies the experience of infusing marijuana into butter, alcohol, and various oils. This book will get you cooking with grass in no time, with special treats inspired by Willie Nelson, Snoop Dogg, and Cheech and Chong, plus all the info you need to stay safe when making and consuming edibles. You will truly learn how to bake a ganja cake and eat it too. So look for the official High Times Cannabis Cookbook wherever finer books are. Attention, Podnet.us listeners. If you haven't heard the political pontifications of Lively and Mr. Libra on the Libra Lounge yet, be sure to visit here Wednesday nights at 6 Pacific or visit thelibralounge.com for archives and links to download current episodes. Be a lounger. The Libra Lounge. Activism begins with ACT. The Rush Belleville Show features the stories of hardworking grassroots activists working for an end to prohibition in today's activist agenda. Oh, I'm so excited to have our next guest on the line. Uh, last time we uh, got to see each other was uh, during the Prop 19 election night out there at Oaksterdam when we were bringing live coverage then. Uh, she is the chancellor of Oaksterdam University and was the spokesperson for the Prop 19 legalization campaign in 2010 in California. And uh, please welcome to the show Dale Sky Jones. Dale, are you there? I am. Hi there, Russ. Thanks for having me on tonight. I'm so glad to have you here. And how are your husband and child? 
you know, I'm a lucky girl. The, the boys keep me very busy, but I'm blessed. They're doing wonderful. Thanks. So glad to have you here on the show because one of the things I definitely wanted to uh, address here is the rumors of Oaksterdam University's demise are greatly exaggerated. Tell folks what's happening with Oaksterdam since the uh, raids that everyone heard about. Indeed, and that is one of my favorite quotations and authors, as a matter of fact, Mr. Samuel Clemens. Uh, yes, it's true. We're not dead yet. Um, as a matter of fact, we merely had the wind knocked out of us. Uh, but I believe we're going to be stronger than ever uh, because we're able to develop a more viable model going into the future. You know, I joke, Russ, our, our money no longer grows on trees. Mm -hmm. um, we've got to do it the hard way now. But it's forced us to take a good look at what we're doing and, and how we're going about it. By the money it doesn't grow on trees anymore, do you mean just that now there's just more knowledge out there, more competition, and so now you're just not the first guys on the block anymore? Well, actually, no, directly I was referring to the fact that once upon a time, the school and, as a matter of fact, the Oak Street Museum were all sponsored by Richard Lee's other businesses. Mm. And when you're, well, growing marijuana, your, your money kind of grows on trees there. <laughs> yes, um, yes. <laughs> we lost our sponsorship. Uh, so we're, we're, you know... Going back to the old-fashioned way uh, that schools tend to make money, which is tuition, yeah. uh, the struggle for us is that much of the tuition that the students that are currently um, learning with us uh, was paid to S.K. Seymour pr prior to the raid. Mm. So we're trying to fulfill the promise to those students that needed that education, uh, but it's a new company now trying to fulfill the promise of the oh. old company. So basically, so the money is with SK Seymour. And the money's with SK Seymour, but the 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 job is now the responsibility. With yeah, <laughs> is with Wise Education. Although I would correct you and say that the money is with the Fed. Oh right, so right. We're looking at a giant donation to the federal <laughs> government right now, and uh, you know, and they took everything but our office furniture. I joke that our staff and myself, well, really volunteers mostly. We're kind of like the Greek fates trying to look out into the great beyond with only one eye, because mm -hmm. we only have the one computer that the Fed didn't get, oh. uh, <laughs> and we all have to share it. So wow. it's been quite the struggle um, to just get back up on our feet. But I've got an amazing group of instructors that have been willing to volunteer their time to continue to teach. I've got an amazing core group of volunteers here at Oaksterdam that are continuing to bring the quality education. And fortunately, I've got a great patient nearby who's still willing to bring the plant so that our students can learn uh, on a day-by-day -day basis. So we're pulling it off somehow, some way, but I, I can't lie, it's gonna be getting more people in the seats, the new students, that are really going to be the secret to our success. Mm -hmm. Boy, uh, Dale, your situation sounds somewhat like my situation <laughs> in in a way, having to start from the ground up and, and build that Indeed. audience. Oh, boy. Uh, so tell us uh, some of the courses that are still available at Oaksterdam and how people could uh, get enrolled into those courses. Well, the good news is that our full program is now back available. We've got uh, the semester, classic semester going right now. Uh, we've already started our fast track horticulture semester, but we've got another one starting at the beginning of July. Uh, we're planning another semester, which is our full basic 101 package and advanced 102 package. Uh, and let me tell you about those real quick. Our basic class, a lot of people think, oh, well, I don't need the basics. But actually, think of it as the foundation. You learn everything that you need to know to be a qualified patient, grow your own medicine, or enter into the medical cannabis movement because you get your politics, your history of cannabis prohibition, and most importantly, the legal aspects of the federal versus state law conflict. Also, your civics, rights, responsibilities, successful law enforcement encounters, all of those things of what not to do. Let's be honest, those are the most expensive lessons in life, <laughs> the what not to do. So you first learn what not to do. Uh, and also how to be a good neighbor, uh, you know, how to have those successful law enforcement encounters, which are the kinds that you walk away from. Um, then we teach you the fun stuff. You learn growing, uh, growing safely and responsibly, either in your own small private garden or you can take it to the next level in our advanced courses. Uh, we also have different methods of ingestion, not, not just, uh, you know, the difference between 
perhaps smoking it or eating it, but importantly, a cooking class, an actual methods of ingestion class on vaporizing. And we're trying to take that to the next level by adding topicals. Uh, when you move into your 102 classes, your advanced classes, this is for folks that are trying to learn either how to get a job, how to work within the industry, or how to work with the industry. Hmm. You know, in many cases, it's just a real estate agent who sure. wants to know how to sell the cannabis businesses. Uh, and those are the ones that are on the front lines right now, understanding, you know, the codes and the rules that different cities have. Mm -hmm. Knowledge is power. Yeah. So these days working with the cannabis industry can actually be, well, not just safer, but more lucrative than working within it. Mm. You know, uh, Dale, from my own experiences, uh, before I became a marijuana law reformer, I taught computer software uh, for a corporation that, you know, would teach people Excel and programming and a bunch of stuff like that. And uh, I used to teach the beginning Microsoft Windows class. And, you know, I'd always have people say, oh, I don't need to take basic Windows. I know everything you know. I know the basics. And they'd come out of my class going, oh, my God, I did not know you could do that. So I imagine you're one of one Everything you never knew. Yeah. <laughs> everything you never knew you wanted to know, but never knew to have. Yeah. yeah and, it's it's true. Absolutely. So you mentioned another thing that I want to bring up, and that's the Oaksterdam Museum. And that's something I think uh, I, I'm really glad that we've got people that are uh, cataloging our culture and our history uh, in museums and, and you know making sure that that doesn't get lost in time. So tell people about the museum. Well, you're absolutely right. And Chris Conrad, with the help of, of Mickey Norris, have been working very diligently to try to bring together an amazing collection on behalf of the entire cannabis movement and, and frankly, the hemp movement as well. Now, we, we placed it in the old school headquarters, which eventually became the Prop 19 headquarters, and well, is now the Blue Sky headquarters, um, and this is where the dispensary moved. Well, in order to keep their permit with the city of Oakland, the museum has to go, mm. and it has to go by June 30th. Oh, my. So the clock is ticking, and it's getting really loud, Russ. You need a home uh, for the have, museum. Yeah, indeed. And so I believe that, you know, this is, this is too important to let go. It's too important to put into storage. The overall impression of just letting them win makes me grit my teeth. Mm -hmm. We can't let that happen. Mm -hmm. This is this is all of us. This is an institution of learning that they're trying to destroy, and we just can't let that happen. Yeah. And it, so, yeah. It, <laughs> Oh, I was, just gonna, I was just going to say that it, it really belies any of their, uh, you know, protestations about wanting to protect the children or what about the gateway theory or whatever bull that they bring to, to try to justify what they're doing when they're shutting down a school, when they're trying to shut down a school and they're trying to take out a guy who was trying to change the law. It really shows you that this is all about politics. Well, make no mistake that they are finding the beacons of light in this entire movement. And, and I'm not referring just to us. I'm referring to just quality institutions like Berkeley Patients Group. Yes. The Zip Tie program up in Mendocino. <laughs> and and no, make no mistake, they're going after those folks that are trying to bring, not even necessarily regulation, but just some level of light mm -hmm. uh, to the, you know, quote unquote, black market. Yeah, it's like, it's almost as if they, they screamed and hollered, oh my God, medical marijuana is out of control. Marijuana is out of control. Oh, okay, well, we got some ideas. How about some zip, tri zip ties? We'll have a nice dispensary behind some walls and some security cameras and people that check IDs. No, 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 no. You can't do that. <laughs> it, it, they want it yeah. to be out of control. Indeed. And instead of paying, you know, continuing to pay the sin tax to the violent drug cartels, you know, it, 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 rather than the schools that, that these farmers would much rather support, especially the ones that I've met up in the, in the Emerald Triangle. These people want to be active members of their community. They want to be good providers for their family and their community. And this, you know, was an opportunity for many of them to do so. And so, you know, make no mistake, this is an attack on all of us. When they attacked Oaksterdam, they weren't just attacking Richard Lee. They were going after institutions of knowledge and memory, and it's vital that we keep these alive. And anyone that's with me, I hope you'll join me in this effort. We need people to sponsor exhibits in the museum, or heck, I'll rename the museum 
Amsterdam <laughs> Museum presented by dot 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 sport <laughs> organization here. It'd be um, like a sports know, stadium, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'll rename the whole damn building. We have a mural. I'll talk to the owner about it. Well, how can um, people get in touch you know, with you, Dale? These are the types of things we can do and realize that most of our students, more than half of our student base, is now from outside of the state of California. So we also have office space in the area. And, you know, well, heck, our students come to you. So placing yourself strategically in the center of the cannabis industry can be done by simply placing your name in the middle of our cannabis museum. And so this is a way that everybody wins. And in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and move the museum into the school just to keep it going until we can find a better answer. So I'll be rearranging uh, my 1600 Broadway auditorium. We're still teaching classes out of our old auditorium. I managed to hold on to it with the landlord. Mm. And uh, our new student services are just right around the corner across from the new Fox Theater in Oakland. It's on the behind the Patient ID Center building at 1734 Telegraph, right across from the Fox Theater. So you can come visit us and, and talk with us normal business hours at 1734 Telegraph. And then class time, we all go over to 1600 Broadway in that big, beautiful auditorium that will also soon house the museum exhibit. Hmm. Folks, uh, nobody works harder to try to legalize marijuana and spread the growing truth about cannabis than Dale Sky Jones, who's our guest today, uh, the chancellor of Oaksterdam University, and she was the spokesperson of Prop 19 back in 2010. Dale, for people that want to help you out as we close things out here, uh, got websites, phone numbers, emails, anything you want to tell people? Please go to oaksterdamuniversity.com. There's donate buttons, or you can just email us. Contact us any way you can with whatever volunteer effort you've got. We'll take it, and we appreciate any time or attention you can give us on social networking. Spread the word. People think that that federal government came and shut us down, but we're still alive and kicking. We just can't seem to get the word out. Well, we're so, going to get the word out it. for you here, Dale, and encourage all the minions out there. Retweet that uh, Oaksterdam is in business and they need your support. Keep us alive. Keep uh, higher learning alive. Keep the museum alive. And uh, Dale Sky Jones, thank you for joining us here on the show. And we'll see you in uh, just a couple weeks there down in the Bay Area. Yeah, but we've got classes the very same weekend that we have the Cannabis Cup going on over in San Francisco. So you can come learn and then party in the evenings. Absolutely. It's a great weekend. All right. Thanks so much, Dale. We'll talk to you again sometime. Thank you, Russ. Stick around, folks. we got Good a radical rant coming up next. I'll tell you who to vote for, for president. You're tuned into the Russ Belleville Show, the voice of the marijuana nation. Brought to you by the National Cannabis Coalition. It's simply business. It's simply business. It's simply business. You know why they won't let us grow. It's simply business. It's simply business. You know why they won't let us grow. It's simply business. Marijuana and alcohol are the two most popular recreational drugs in America. Marijuana smoking is non-toxic, relatively safe, and has a low risk of dependence. Alcohol drinking is potentially fatal, dangerous to society, and is quite addictive. Marijuana is safer, so why are we driving people to drink? That's the question of the new book, Marijuana is Safer, So Why Are We Driving People to Drink? by Paul Armentano, Mason Tvert, and Steve Fox. Visit Amazon.com or ChelseaGreen.com today to order your copy of Marijuana is Safer or visit MarijuanaIsSafer.com. Hi, this is Willie Nelson. Friends, it's time we legalize the responsible use of marijuana and stop treating marijuana smokers like criminals. We're destroying the lives and careers of hundreds of thousands of good, hardworking Americans every year in this country for no good reason. There's absolutely nothing wrong with smoking pot. For more information on how you can help legalize marijuana, please contact Normal at norml.org.
You want answers? I'm as mad as hell, and I'm not going to take this anymore. You want answers? You have offended my family. I think I'm entitled. You want answers? I want the truth. And you have offended Shaolin Temple. You can't handle the truth. Surely you can't be serious. I am serious. And don't call me Shirley. Radical Brandt. Okay, folks, uh, we're going to get right into this. Because of my new position here, I can tell you who to vote for. I used to work for an employer where that wasn't allowed because, you know, tax issues and stuff. Not a, not a big deal. But, you know, it did curb how I could talk to you. But now I can be open and honest and tell you just how to vote for president. And I'm going to tell you, if you want marijuana legalized, you need to be pragmatic about it. Now, I tried to make this point before, but I was reminded of it because I got a tweet over the weekend from someone who was encouraging me to consider Dr. Jill Stein. She's the Green Party candidate who just recently won the nomination of her party, uh, who fended off a challenge from Roseanne Barr. Yes, that Roseanne Barr. And yeah, I kind of took Roseanne seriously. I mean, I never thought the guy who starred in Hercules in New York would end up to be governor of California. So, you know, I don't count anybody out. But Jill Stein, Dr. Jill Stein, is the nominee for the Green Party. So I'm considering it willing to consider anybody. And since LZ Granderson last week said we're all idiots, those of us in the marijuana nation who might decide who to vote for president based on their legalization stance, uh, I figured that maybe I ought to take a stab at this. I mean, I don't know why he thinks we're idiots. I think it's quite rational to factor in whether the person that wants your vote for president would continue to allow body armored law enforcers with automatic weapons and grenades to break down your door, shoot your dog, terrify your kid, seize your assets, and your scholarship, ruin your career, imprison your family, murder your grandma, and stuff you in a cage for decades um, just for a flower that you're growing in your basement. Yeah, I, I think that's kind of a serious consideration. But whether or not legalization should be your only consideration, and that's really what LZ was critiquing, uh, well, I kind of agree. I do. I, I think being a, <clears throat> a one-issue voter is kind of simplistic in today's world. And I'll say that not just to marijuana legalizers. I'll say that to, you know, pro-life people, pro-choice people, gun rights people, evangelicals, you know. If you're just basing your vote for president on just one litmus test issue, uh, you're not taking the world and politics very seriously. I mean, let me give you a for instance, right? Suppose there's a candidate out there who's absolutely going to legalize weed but he's also going to end net neutrality, right? The free and open internet. For me, I'd be worse off if I voted for that guy. Even though I'd love to have legal weed, ending net neutrality would end this program and a lot of the work that I do on the internet. So I, I couldn't vote for the guy, even if he was going to legalize weed. And, and you know, let's take for existence, maybe if I was going to vote for a guy who'd, who'd say, you know, maybe he's from Texas and he wants to legal, he'd let states legalize weed, but he'd also let states criminalize abortion. Well, that works out okay for me, but for my nieces back in Idaho, they're a little worse off. So I, I have to factor that into my decision. You see what I mean? You can't just you know pick one issue and ride everything on that. So I figure the easiest way to do with, deal with this is let's start with who not to vote for. And that's Mitt Romney, or as I call him, R Money. It's an anagram, and as rap names go, not a bad rap name. I mean, he recently admitted that marijuana isn't an issue of significance to him. Uh, he turned his back back in 2007 on the campaign trail when the, the folks uh, with New Hampshire Compassion were trying to uh, get his attention on the medical marijuana issue. He turned his back on a guy in a wheelchair who was trying to ask him questions about medical marijuana. But beyond all that, I could just never fathom anyone voting for a guy who bullies the gay kids in high school and ties the dog to the roof of his car for a 12-hour trip. Y y you lost me on that one. Could never vote for that guy. Sorry. I mean, I'm willing to listen to our, if anyone out there wants to convince me that a vote for Mitt Romney would be good for marijuana legalization, feel free to send me emails, uh, russ at radicalrust.com. I'd love to hear about it, but I, I just don't see it, right? Uh, and besides, I know people are saying that, you know, Obama's gone all hog wild here on the crackdown. And he's the worst president ever on medical marijuana, but that's the U.S. attorneys acting with Obama kind of not paying much attention to the issue. Imagine our money in office paying attention to the issue and directing the U.S. attorneys. I think it would be much worse off. Now, also on the Republican side, there still stands Representative Ron Paul raising money and campaigning when his chances of winning the Republican nomination is worse than the chances of the governor of Oklahoma signing a law to legalize mescaline. Now, I know, 
I know the Ron Paul revolutionaries are going to come crashing my comments section, telling me how much he supports marijuana legalization. Ron Paul, he supports marijuana legalization. But guess what, folks? He doesn't. He supports states' rights to determine what they do about marijuana and that the federal government has no jurisdiction in drug policy. So President Paul would work out okay for me in Oregon, but my friends in Oklahoma would still go to prison for hash, for life for hash. So sorry, Paul Bots. I, I, I have to put Ron Paul as another guy to put in the not to vote for column. Now, if you can explain to me why I want to live in a country where there's no federal minimum wage, no occupational safety and health standards, no labor unions, no antitrust enforcement, no estate tax, no tax credits for elderly or child care, no birth citizenship, no funding of family planning, no flag burning, and support of state abortion bans, gay marriage bans, offshore drilling, weakened social security, school prayer, teaching creationism, guns everywhere and anywhere, and zygotes defined as citizens in exchange for my state and a few others being able to legalize weed? then I'll listen. And by the way, that little laundry list I just gave you, visit my blog at RadicalRust.com, click on the link. It's a link to bills that Ron Paul has actually authored or sponsored to do exactly all of those things. If you think working for minimum wage sucks, imagine when your company doesn't have to pay you minimum wage. Imagine working at the KFC and they pay you in chicken and biscuits. So in that case then, we're left with President Obama, and the major third party challengers, Libertarian Governor Gary Johnson and Green Party's Dr. Jill Stein. Now, given that you can't vote for Romney and that Obama's been terrible for the marijuana nation and a third party candidate's not going to win, what do you do? Yes, yes, Libertarians, come close. Libertarians, Green Parties, come here, real close here. You're going to have to face up to the fact, the fact that your candidate is not going to become president. All the fervent wishing and desperate hoping was not going to change electoral and financial math. Now, don't get me wrong. That does not diminish the importance of these parties and their candidates running for president. By God, we desperately need them running for president. We desperately need more voices than just corporate Republicans and corporate Democrats. Absolutely. Oh, and by the way, before I go any farther here, uh, full disclosure, I've been at a number of events with Governor Gary Johnson, met him personally, talked to him personally, and I've even moderated a panel with Governor Johnson and Senator, uh, former Senator and presidential candidate Mike Gravel. So, so there is a personal interest here in Governor Gary Johnson. I just want to make that clear here. But the fact that they're called third parties, that should tell you something. If we lived in a parliamentary system like they have in Canada or England, multiple parties would exist. They wouldn't be called third parties. Multiple parties would exist and coalitions would form and our politics would look very, very different. But we don't. We have a winner take all system. And if you do any research on the math of game theory, you'll find such a system guarantees either an outright duopoly like we find in Republicans and Democrats or an outright monopoly like we find in Republicans and Democrats on a few issues out there. So what are we going to do? How are we going to vote? Let's take a look then at what we could do that would actually give some power to third parties. There's math on this, people. And you know me, I'm all about science and reason, right? The solution that the Libertarians and the Greens ought to be joining forces on is to implement a change to our voting system from winner takes all to range voting. Look up rangevoting.org. This is a system where voters get to score the candidates on a scale like, it could be any scale, but let's just say zero to nine, right? Kind of like Olympic scoring. Really, seriously, like the, the Olympic judging. And it's mathematically shown to produce the most desirable outcome in an election among the greatest number of voters. It is a system used in nature from beehives to ant colonies, where evolution has whittled down the best strategies for survival when groups have to make a life or death decision. Now, since it's eminently rational, scientifically verifiable, and proven in nature, it's not going to be a part of our electoral process anytime soon. But libertarians and greens should be working for this. They should work for ballot access like they are now, take over some small jurisdictions, get some local offices, and start implementing range voting at the city level, at the county level. Get people used to it. Get people understanding the idea. And as it succeeds and spreads, perhaps in a generation or two, that's how we'll pick our presidents. Oh, and by the way, 
It's not unconstitutional. The founding fathers, when they wrote the Constitution, very specifically were vague about vote, about the word vote. They were just as vague about the word vote as they were, were about the word creator. And at that time, the uh, Jefferson and Franklin were pals with this guy, this a mathematician uh, in uh, France, I believe his name, Cordeset, who came up with a lot of these theories of range voting and game theory. And they were enlightenment reasoned men. They knew very well that there were better systems of voting than one man, one vote and winner takes all. So it ain't constitutional, unconstitutional, folks. But that's not the world we live in. Today, you get a vote for Obama or not Obama. That's it. That's all you get. Now, look, I could fill a whole nother page with reasons not to vote for Barack Obama, starting with the marijuana issue, and then fill a whole nother page with not prosecuting Bush era torturers, letting Wall Street cooks go free with bonuses, and codifying into law the regal power to maintain a list of people targeted for assassination by flying robots that can include American citizens on American soil. And then to be fair to Coleco, I'd have to list the good things Obama's done, like getting a lot of improvement in health care for people and allowing gays and lesbians to die in a Middle Eastern war without hiding who they are. Oh, yeah, and killing Osama bin Laden. Thank you for that. Love it. But we got to be pragmatic. That's what this whole rant's about. And even with this crackdown on medical marijuana, a President Obama is going to be better than a President Romney for marijuana legalizers. I mean, to see Obama evolve his position on gay marriage under rising public support for that issue gives me hope that the same thing could happen for marijuana legalization as we start to beat 60 percent in the opinion polls, which is coming very soon. The added pressure of one, two, or even three states out here in the West legalizing personal use will force his hand just as much as Joe Biden's gaffe forced his hand on gay marriage. Those legal states are going to want the tax revenues and jobs, and Obama's going to be very reluctant to be seen as squashing that with raids and lawsuits. And state Democratic parties that are really wary now of losses by Steve Cooley and Dwight Holton and Sylvester Reyes are going to start endorsing legalization in the West, and that conflict within the National Democratic Party is only going to start growing up until 2016. Now, Obama's not going to legalize federally, don't get me wrong, we know he's not going to do that. But he's not going to have the resources or political capital to go aggressively after legalization. Now, if that sounds idealistic to you, hope and dream and pie in the sky, rerun that same scenario under President Romney and see if it doesn't sound damn impossible. Hell, going gangbusters after legalized marijuana would win Romney support from parts of his Republican base. <laughs> so uh, that's where his support is weakest, you know, the evangelicals and social conservatives. So the thing to do in this situation is that understand the pragmatism of it. I've just told you that you get to vote for Obama or not Obama, but that doesn't mean you have to vote for Barack Obama. Remember, it's not that Obama wins. It's that Romney loses. That's the important part. And thanks to our anti-democratic electoral college system, we don't have to all worry about this problem. You might live in a state like California where every single marijuana smoker there could vote for Dr. Jill Stein and the state's still going to send its 55 electors to Obama. Every toker in Texas could vote for Gary, Governor Gary Johnson and the state will still send its 38 electoral votes to Romney. There's this great website out there. I encourage you to check it out. It's called electoral-vote.com and it tracks the latest polls and predicts the outcome of the electoral college. If your state is solid red or solid blue? Hell, vote for Jill Stein. Vote for Gary Johnson. Write in Ron Paul. Write in Mickey Mouse for all I care because it's not going to make a damn bit of difference as to who wins your state. But if you look at that map and you see your state as a swing state, those are the states that are colored in white, white with outlines or just plain old white if they're dead tied, then you got to seriously consider that if you want marijuana legalized, is giving your vote to Dr. Stein, Governor Johnson, or Representative Paul throwing it away? Is that giving the momentum that Romney would need to swing that state? As electoral vote stands right now, Romney needs only to take all of his red and slightly red states and outlined red states and swing Ohio and Florida, and he's the next president of the United States. So... Find that out, electoral-vote.com, pick your state, is the vote Russ smart. Show. The Russ Belleville Show is blogging and podcasting daily at RadicalRuss.com.
Oh, folks, sorry about the late start. I wish we could take this into hour two and take some calls on this. I know I've riled up some folks, I'm sure. But uh, we'll be back tomorrow at 3 p.m. Pacific time, live here on National Cannabis Radio. For Wiz Coleco, Brian the Red, and Cannabis Carry, I'm Radical Russ. Thanks for joining us. Till next time, take care of each other, tokers.